yeah thanks again for joining um that uh, that session today uh this session today is about uh, giving you an update uh, what um, what features um, are new to the to the latest uh, feature pack of the feed class integration add-on that has been recently released uh, mid of may um when i from for the agenda today we want to i want to concentrate of course on on a few highlight features uh, that have been released uh, with the with the feature pack um i want to concentrate and, and give you a bit more detail on these so-called highlight features um i will also give you an overview about other improvements and and features that that are also part of that release and um, would also like to give you a quick view uh, into the system how, how some of the new features look like um, we'll give you an outlook to to the roadmap what is planned uh, for next release and for future releases and um, yeah then would like to open it up to you um, to give me your questions and hopefully we can I can answer all of them properly. Good. First highlight of the May release that slide might look a bit familiar to somebody who saw our our roadmap slides uh, from from the last release uh, where we already um, presented this 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 will be part of of the next um, feature pack and yeah we made it uh, we we enabled the integration add-on um, to support sap s for hana lean service procurement uh, between feed class and the s for hana system uh, utilizing the feed class integration add-on what does that mean for for the customers now it means that um, customers can either choose between the uh, still working with the classic MMSRV services in their S4HANA system or going more towards the let's say the future uh, processes and enabling the lean services in their S4HANA system and independent whatever they they use and um, enable in S4HANA the the feed class integration add-on is now able to support this in the end to end processes um, between the both applications. Um, it doesn't mean that the customer has to choose either or. Um, we can also support mixed scenarios when, for example, a customer has a multi backend landscape where they have, for example, an existing ECC system where they can, of course, only have a classic MMSIV services or also an S4HANA system where they work with classic services, but they can also have S4HANA systems in their landscape where they're using lean services. So this is this is both supported and, and working um, against one and the same feed class tenant. It also has the advantage uh, when we think about customers um, going in the transformation process and the migration process from an ECC system using classic services, upgrading to an S4HANA and, and want to go the, the lean service route with the S4HANA system. So we have the same, still the same integration tool and capabilities with the add-on. Uh, it's just um, additional integration interfaces that have to be configured but the let's say the backbone and um, the framework still is the same for the customer yeah the lean service processes are supported for contingent workforce management as well as services procurement um, it's also supported for assignment management we does not we do not explicitly name it here because um, yeah, assignment management is more or less now embedded into service procurement. The integration process for lean services um, works more or less in, in two main scenarios. So we, we see one scenario where the process uh, is initiated within feed class, 
where <clears throat> either a work order or a statement of work are created with um, limit values or with events, uh, for example, in a, in a statement of work. And um, we have now a, a two-step integration for purchase requisition and purchase order, which is more or less aligned to the existing feed class standard integrations that existed for lean services um, in parallel. That means um, the first integration step is executed when the, the work order or the SOW is approved. Um, in that case, it's going into the integration, creating a purchase requisition in the S4HANA system and uh, sending back the response to feed class with the purchase requisition information and the approval message. Then the process goes ahead in, in feed class um, and um, sends it to the supplier acceptance or for, for the work order and for the, for the SOW response to the supplier uh, in case of the service procurement process. And once accepted from the supplier, we have our second integration step and that second integration step is then converting or more or less finalizing the purchase requisition first and then converting the purchase requisition into a purchase order in that process we we now support two different um, options um, like in the past via that automatic po conversion or uh, when you know it under the name of the ME59N transaction that we utilized in the past that is still supported, but we now also support uh, a direct conversion when, when a supplier is not enabled in the s system for automatic PO conversion that the add-on itself takes care um, of the PO creation. For a revision process, when, when a work order or an SOW are being revised in feed class, we don't have that two-step integration. The PR stays as it is in S4HANA, and we will do have a direct uh, update of the purchase order after the supplier acceptance step. Release-wise, um, we're supporting um, from S4HANA 2022, and of course, the newer releases. The second scenario uh, that, that comes um, with the lean service integration is also the um, S4HANA initiated process. In that process, we are only talking about the, the service procurement integration, so the statement of work. Um, in that process, the, uh, the system is looking for purchase orders, purchase orders who are released um, from the flexible workflow, for example. Um, uh, are then triggered to create a statement of work in B class. For, th for such POs, we are pretty um, independent where they originate from. So this could be an RFQ. It could be um, something out of the, the project system or the plant maintenance system um, that generated a PR first and, and then a PO. It could also be uh, for customers who are still working with an old SRM system or maybe an Ariba a guided buying. Um, at the end, the system doesn't care where the PO is coming from, just have to um, fall under the, the some filter criteria and is then picked up and, and sent to FICLAS creating the statement of work. From a line item perspective, uh, it's either the the lean service line items where we have the materials of the product type two or um, the enhanced limit line items which is then the line item type e where we define limits and and send them into the sow as separate line items a purchase order change is then also triggering as a, an sow revision and I have to mention it, uh, that integration flow can also exist in parallel uh, if a customer has assignment management in place. But for assignment management, um, 
only the enhanced limit line items are applicable. Good. Um, before I go to the next one, I would like to give you a, a brief overview or a brief look into the system, how a, how a purchase order and, and the statement of work looks like for that uh, second scenario. I will go into the into the system first. Um, just have to copy my purchase order number. Um, I'm still here. So this is an example of a purchase order in in an Esfahana system. We um, we have a couple of um, attributes in here, for example, in our scenario, we choose a specific document type that uh, a customer can also um, use. Customer can also use a standard uh, document type. And uh, in that purchase order, in that example, we have one line item. We can go to the detail of that line item. That line item is of type enhanced limit in that case. And that enhanced limit is in that example for a total value of 15,000 um, euros. For, well, let me sign in in feed class, how it looks like there. So in feed class, this purchase order of the, of the S4HANA system, we see it here, the same number, um, generated a statement of work. Um, that statement of work in our case is from a specific SOW template. Um, so we typically separate then two different templates, uh, one where we have the S4 initiated process and another template where an SOW is initiated, created in FeedClouds manually itself. So we see here when we look into the details, we have our total budget, uh, like our purchase order. We also have um, our, yeah, all of our header administrative data that we saw on the purchase order. But uh, more interesting when we look into the characteristics, we now see. Um, at the moment, we already have two line items, but when we look at the first line item here, this is the one that has been created initially based on the enhanced limit line item uh, on the purchase order. Why do we have already a second line item in here now? It's because um, the supplier itemized the, the line item with the limit value to, to invoice uh, some amount. In that case, uh, we, we invoiced the full amount and that that itemized event here is then reflected. Let me go back in that lean service service entry sheet. So we see this here in the process flow. This is the lean service service entry sheet. We also have the information about, um, we go to the item details, the information about the amount the accounting data, general ledger account, and um, all that stuff that has been itemized in on the SOW in feed class. We also should see, I think I have to go one step back. Um, the invoice, an invoice already exists as well because we saw when I switch back to my feed class application, this is the invoice that has been generated in feed class um, about that amount. And this has been integrated as well into, into the S4HANA system. That's why we, we see it here in the purchase order history as well. So more or less exactly this, the same integration flow that we have since uh, since many years uh, when we when you think about the the classic mmsrv services it's an end-to-end -end integration between the different feed class document types a work order or statement of work to a pr po service entry sheet and an invoice 
just with the difference um, that the purchase order and the service entry sheets now look a little bit different, um, where we have then these material line items of service type two and or uh, line items of type enhanced limit. But the process um, is completely, no, not completely the same because I, I described you the two step integration with the PR and PO, but um, besides of that, the integration flow is exactly the same. Good. Coming to the to the second highlight, um, I want to mention for for this uh, release, which is uh, also a crucial thing, looking to the the, the whole strategy, how how Feedglass um, wants to work with contracts. Uh, maybe you remember in the past, contracts uh, have been typically represented as a master statement of work, um, which had some disadvantages in the past. And the new strategy is to, to make use of the so-called event hierarchy 2.0. What is the event hierarchy 2.0 at the end? It's uh, three predefined pick lists in the feed class system. The pick lists represent uh, contract header data, contract item data, and contract condition data. And in feed class, these three pick lists are then joined by a so-called data set, creating the contract lookup for the end user in the system. And um, <clears throat> the integration add-on has now the, the interfaces um, in the delivery to populate this contract data into the pick list into free class um, means whenever a contract is released or fully defined in case there is no release strategy sitting on that contract it triggers the interfaces and um, updating uploading the data into feed class when a contract expires the entries uh, in the pick list are being deactivated. Condition-wise, we have to separate here between the lean service scenario, where we have a different uh, standard, let's say standard pricing condition type, which is called PRP0, um, that is that is supported. And for the classic service, the, the default pricing condition is called PB00. Um, we mentioned this here, because um, what is what is not supported in these um, lookups are, for example, uh, discounts like like quantity based discounts. As I mean, the the lookups are used or should be used um, by the yeah by the purchaser or whoever is working in feed class when when adding a new event to to an SOW line item to choose out of a a uh, predefined list um, of services um, with negotiated rates. Yeah, I mean, as we saw here for with the different uh, contract conditions, uh, this this feature is not only available for the new lean service uh, capabilities, that feature is also available for the customers who are still using classic MMSRV contracts. Good. Before we come to this, um, as I mentioned, I, I wanted to highlight or I want to talk through this in more detail as we see this as the two highlights of, of, the, of the feature pack. But what I want to share with you as well is um, there are a couple more <laughs> features, enhancements, improvements uh, that are available with that um, feature pack 8 that are of course documented here on the SAP help portal. And um, it's also then separated um, into the, I say old in quotes component uh, that exists since uh, 2020 um, with all the improvements. And we also have a new component in place uh, that uh, contains all the content for the lean service integration. That means if customers uh, are asking in the future, yeah, we would like to go for the lean service integration, then it's a new 
an additional add-on that they that they have to download and install in their system. But it's um, it's available under the same SKU, so it's there is no additional license required. It's under the same product version um, available where they where they downloaded the other component in the past. It's just a, an additional component that we had to build uh, due to technical reasons because this uh, component is is only applicable for S4HANA 2022 and newer. Good. Yeah, this for your information, I, I wanted to bring on that slide deck as well um, for everybody who's not aware. So we have um, in the meantime, five different SKUs uh, where customers can can utilize the, the FeedLus integration add-on um, together with their FeedLus subscription. So we have here the, the three uh, ERP editions for contingent workforce, service procurement assignment management. And we have here the, the two newer uh, SKU material numbers um, for the for the partner editions also for ERP means um, where a customer subscribing to the partner edition uh, is also allowed to download, install, and use the Feed Plus integration add-on. Good. Having a look to the roadmap. Um, a couple of a couple of items that I that I have on that slide here. Uh, next release, which is planned for October this year, we yeah we want to keep it a bit more yeah lean, <laughs> lean not <laughs> in case of lean services, but but lean because because that the last release was was pretty huge and big, so we of course want to concentrate in in stabilizing these uh, the whole new uh, feature set um but not only this we we want to um yeah extend also the 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 features of the of the add-on of course so there's one new feature for the lean service that uh, will be yeah we, we will be working on for the next release which is the accruals for the service entry sheet um meaning that customers might need the uh, let's say the timesheet data uh, earlier in their S4HANA system than uh, after I mean before they are being approved in feed class they might already need this data um, reported against the purchase order in S4HANA so we will work on on a flow for that um, what we are what we will also bring in into the next release is a feature called time confirmation against plant maintenance operation um, of course only relevant for plant maintenance customers background is um, i mean in the past we we saw the integration processes always only under the uh, let's say umbrella of the of the procurement scenario but plant maintenance customers um, also want to see um how is my yeah real my, my real data against the planning data and that feature will then report the the hours um that are that are already used to submit the, the service entry sheets in the system against the purchase order that the that the hours from the service entry sheet um will be reported against the plant maintenance order operation in the system um and then a couple of smaller things. Uh, Feed class will release uh, some new native fields that in the past uh, were always uh, set up as custom fields, like the purchase requisition number, the purchasing group, and material group. They once they are available as native fields, um, we will also adopt then the the add-on and the integration to those native fields. Uh, the roadmap beyond. Um, our October release. Um, I want to um, mention two two highlights that we have uh, in scope together with SAP Feed Class. One thing is that we would like to enable a, the the multi line work order integration. So the work order at the moment is always kind of a just a header object uh, that that holds uh, a total budget. 
Um, but of course, the spend matrix as a as a functionality on the work order is available. And once that spend matrix functionality is extended in feed class to to work with the with the rates 2.0, then we will start working on um, bringing this into the integration as a multi-line work order. And what we will also work on once the feature is available in SAP feed class, um, so the, the multi-bit feature is available, then we will bring in the new collaboration process, especially for plan maintenance and, and project system um, to integrate RFQs from the S4HANA system into multi-bits uh, in, in feed class, doing the collaboration there, and then based on based on the award in, in feed class, turning it into a, a purchase order in, in S4HANA. Good. Last but not least, um, I just want to <laughs> show this slide here as we are not only the, uh, let's say, the providers of the software of the feed class integration add-on, um, we are also there to, to support partners, customers uh, with, the, with the tool itself. That's why we have also our, our training initiatives and, and training offerings um, for partners, of course, as well as the customers itself, um, where we have our training for the integration add-on itself that exists since uh, quite some time. And um, we are also working currently on a, on a deployment training for yeah, partners uh, who, who should go or who, who will do the deployment and implementation of, of a feed class project maybe for the first time that um, they can get a training from us as well. We're doing our sales support. Um, make, we make, can make use of our demo landscape um with an ECC system, with an S4 HANA system and uh, two different feed class tenants. And um, of course, if required, we can also help out with our consulting support, uh, professional services support for say heavier projects typically where we have our plant maintenance customers, where we have customers with, with um, multiple uh backend systems in in different releases and versions from from sap ecc to s4 hana um or some more complex customers um, in the public sector for example um, or whenever additional consulting or interfaces are required good uh, in the slide deck that I will share afterwards, there are also a recap from, from the last release. Uh, I don't want to go through this in that session right now, 